And we're live. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Hello, hello, hello. Hi to everyone. Thanks for joining us. Nice and early, on time. Well done, all of you. First up, we got Vix. Hello, Vix from Scotland. And uh, Claire and Pow and Jen. Steph Wilkins, she's got the right idea. She's sharing straight away. I've just seen Jackie there. Hi, Jackie. Richard Townsend, Jules, Mike from Lincoln, Tony Feezy, uh, Sam from London, John. We've got someone from Denmark there. Worcester, New Jersey, Salisbury, Richmond in North Yorkshire, Orkney, Wales, Angie in Leeds. Wow, we've got loads of people on here. Dave, let me just uh, pop the screen so people can see you as well. Hello, Dave. Hey everyone! Hey, there's Ireland on as well. Of course. We can't, not sure. hey, hey, hey. We can't not have Ireland on. Am I on? Uh, are you actually seeing me now? Yeah, I'm, I'm see still only seeing you. Yeah, we can see you, man. We're going back to me though for a moment. And we've got Natalie Healy on. Of course, we've got to have Natalie Healy on. Hello, Natalie. Right, guys, listen, so many of you are sharing so far. You kind of got the sharing vibe straight away, which is great. So do us a favor. If you want to share this, and this is a Periscope well worth sharing, uh, please, you can swipe up or down, left or right, and then press the share button. You can share to Facebook, Twitter, or Periscope, or indeed all three. So swipe up or down, left or right, and then press the share button uh, and uh, share on Facebook, Twitter, and Periscope. So good to have you all on there. Hello, Brian. Uh, who else we got? Money Wisest just invited some followers. Thanks for doing that. Kanan as well. Well done to you. Uh, DSA Driving. Hello to Dave. Apparently two of uh, DSA's faves. And they want Randy Gage on as well. And then that would be the perfect set, apparently. Uh, Stuart Kelly says hi from Dublin. Uh, Luby Lou says hi. My super success is sharing as well. Hello to Carly from Southampton. Cherie, thanks for sharing. Lulu Wiltshire. Uh, we've got someone there from Shreve. All people sharing. Just a reminder again, swipe up or down, left or right, and then press the share button. And you can share on Twitter, Facebook, or Periscope. And don't forget, don't forget, you've got to tap the screen. Tap, 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 tap. A bit like that. That gives lots of love hearts, and uh, love hearts helps with uh, my self-esteem, which otherwise is shattered if I don't get enough love hearts. Uh, we've got Alison there, Alison uh, Delaney. Hi, Alison. Many of you will know Alison Delaney. She's just released a fantastic uh, book herself, which I'll be having her on Periscope uh, in the next uh, couple of weeks to chat about. Uh, a little, a little chick went to the moon, I think it was called. Might have got the name wrong there. I apologise if I did. Uh, right, Dave, you back onto the picture. Hello, Dave. <laughs> hey, everyone. Wow, they're flying in. Look at all those hearts, Wes. It's a heart party already. It needs to be. <laughs> heart party already. Yeah, good. <clears throat> so. Good evening. Good evening. Natalie will be there. Can't wait to see you Saturday, Wes. Uh -huh. mm. Yeah, working with Natalie on Saturday. That'll be fun. <clears throat> Excellent. Cool. So we've got over 300, nearly 350 of you have joined us so far. Just uh, once more before we uh, get started. If you want to share this, and this is a Periscope well worth sharing, you can swipe up or down, left or right, and then press the share button. And make sure whilst you're doing the sharing, you also do some love hearts as well. Uh, Natalie Healy says that she loves you, Dave, and she put four. Wow, it's beautiful. I love her too. We are uh, quite a team. You are quite a team. She put four love hearts, not three, not two, but four. <laughs> we need more of her love hearts than that, though. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Okay. Well, I, it's, uh, let's just... Uh... Just turn back to me for a moment. It's an absolute pleasure to have Dave O'Connor joining us. Obviously, we're not in the same place. Dave is in Vancouver and I am in London. So uh, there's a little bit of a distance between us uh, right now, um, but uh, only geographically. Uh, Dave has today launched his new book, How to Create the Mindset of a Network Marketing Champion. 
And it, uh, let me just hold it up here. You don't, you don't have to look at me for a moment, you can look at the book. It details the exact system that Dave has used with many top network marketing leaders from around the world over the last 12 years. And in particular, this book features details of his work with our lovely friend, the lovely Natalie Healy, who's on this call. Uh, and for those that don't know, Dave has been Natalie's kind of mindset mentor for seven years now. And using the principles that are outlined in this book, uh, Natalie has risen to become the number one in her company in the UK and the number three distributor in the world in her company, earning a significant income. So we're going to have a little bit of a chat about the book and we're going to have a little bit of a chat about um, seven kind of mindset tips to really help you have a great 2016. So Dave, I'm going to bring you in now and uh, first of all, Dave, congratulations on uh, your first book. Yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of like giving birth, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> it's like your baby is out there. And uh, I have to say, the response has been uh, awesome. I think we're already number two on Amazon uh, in, in the first day. So it's uh, it's very exciting. It's been a long time in the making. And uh, to be honest, it was Nat who originally said to me, you know what, you know, we've done this and we, you know, you've taken me from literally zero to hero here over the last five to seven years. So why don't we document that? Why don't we put that in a, a, a systemized step-by-step -step, um, program for people uh, so that it can be duplicated? So uh, we've been working on that all this year and finally here it is. And I'm super excited about it, I have to say. It's great because many of us, you know, know Dave. Dave's got a particularly strong following uh, in um, Natalie's network in particular, but you've got people following you all around the world now, Dave. And the interesting thing about you is when you, when you actually, this book came out and I, I had the privilege of writing the foreword, it only just occurred to me as I was doing it, oh, this is Dave's first book. Because you've kind of been on the scene for a while, you know, such a long time now. And you obviously had your CD uh, audio book that came out, um, what was it, about a year or so ago. Uh, and so, you know, that, that's a real achievement. So, so well done, Dave. There as an author now. Yeah, yeah, it feels great. Thank you, my friend. And it's one thing I decided early on. Uh, I said that people say, when are you doing the book? When are you doing the book? And I said, well, you know what? I just want to continue and just get the message out there and get the results and put it into a proven system. And when it's there and it's ironclad and it works beyond a shadow of a doubt, uh, then we'll get the book out there. Lots of people will be excited to get this. By the way, if you haven't got this book yet, you can, if you're in the UK in particular, you can get it from Knowledge is King. That's knowledgeisking.co.uk. Uh, and why not, if you are in the UK, if you don't belong to the Knowledge is King Book of the Month uh, scheme, you really should look at it. It's like eight to ten pounds a month. And then at the start of every month, you get a book, one of the, the new releases out. You get it before anyone else. Uh, it includes postage. You often get it for less than the actual uh, trade, you know, the, the price that you'd, you'd buy it uh, on the table for. So it's well worth considering that uh, if you're serious about network marketing. Yeah, people are saying Barry the book there. Barry the book, uh, as we know, runs Knowledge is King. Uh, and it's, I always find it fascinating, of course, that Barry's uh, surname is The Book, uh, having had uh, gone into a career uh, of selling books. But um, it's also available on Kindle, isn't it, Dave? So people can just go directly onto Amazon uh, and find it there and download it onto Kindle if they want to. Yeah, you can do that straight away as well, yeah. Good stuff. So let's, let's get started then. You, you, we've, we've kind of talked about having seven mindset tips to become a network marketing champion. So talk us through the first one, Dave. Well, the first one, without a doubt, is what we start the book with is that you've got to create a vision. And I find that most people leave this part out. You know, they, they really do spend more time planning their holidays um, than actually crafting a vision for the future. And all of the greatest entrepreneurs I've worked with, the greatest network marketing leaders, of course, including Nat that I've worked with, um, all of the people I've studied model, like I've been fortunate to sit down uh, with Richard Branson for a session to pick his brains, and straight away, you notice that they have this vision. It's one of the things that we had to get Nat to do starting out. Literally start at the end, have an end outcome. You know, where 
do you want your business and your life to be five years from now? And here's the thing, you know, you're starting out, as you know, um, Wes, every pro was once an amateur and everyone starting out, they don't have the money in their bank account, they don't have the track record, but the greats, what they have is a vision. They've no evidence of this vision in their life right, right now, but that is the mastery. True mastery is when that vision on the inside is more compelling than what you're seeing on the outside. And once you really clearly articulate that, then you literally put that to the forefront of your mind and you eat, drink, and sleep. That's what I've noticed the greats have done. The greats in network marketing, you know, when you model their mindsets, they, their great leaders are practiced in the art of thinking and feeling ahead of the actual experience. They not only set their intention every day, to visualize the people they want to attract, the way they want their meetings to go. They start to feel what it's like to have that success ahead of time. And then they actually bring that forward into their life. It's, 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 it's the secret of secrets for me. And if you don't have that, then you're going to struggle from the get-go. If you do have it, you'll notice that everything will start to fall into place. And, you know, rest, that's okay um, to think like that initially because people are afraid to think big. But it's one of the greatest failings of people. They really do, as the saying goes, aim too low and score. They've got to think big because that creates, and this word is very important. If you're going to write things down, folks, write down the word excitement. Because you've got to have a vision that completely excites you. So when people meet you, they could be making more money than you. But they will buy into your vision with your passion and with your excitement. And then, you know, it's okay then to have a big vision, but to start small and to take those baby steps every day. That's interesting you say that, Dave, about people knowing what they want, people that end up doing well, being successful, knowing what they want. Um, I certainly find myself that when you achieve certain things, I almost end up being a little bit disappointed almost because I, I, I was thinking, oh, I thought that would be more exciting than that. But then, and you have other people say, well, you seem really calm about it. You seem to take it in your stride. And it, it, would it be fair to say that actually for high achievers, because they've pictured it for so long, once it arrives, it's like, yeah, this doesn't surprise me. I expected success. Well, that's what they, they studied in the research was with people like late great Steve Jobs or visionaries or the greatest network marketers on the planet. They've literally gone out there into the future, experienced it ahead of time, and then woke up, if you like, from that future and started to think, feel, and act as if they were already there. And there's a different energy then to their phone calls, to when they're following up with people, um, to their activities during the day. Like if you take someone like Gandhi, for example, I mean, you might say it got nothing to do with network marketing. Gandhi was the greatest networker on the planet at one point. Right, the united 200 million minds in a spirit of harmony. Gandhi had no evidence of his vision in front of him. And for much of the time, just like in your network marketing business, much of the, the feedback from the external world will show that nothing is happening. But he believed in a future that wasn't there. It was there inside of his mind. So therefore, you're absolutely right that you just know it's only a matter of time before it happens. Mm. So, believe in someone saying there, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Believe in his sin, indeed, yeah. So, um, just to remind you, I am, it's Wes Linden here. I'm joined by Dave O'Connor, who today released the book, How to Create the Mindset of a Network Marketing Champion. And we are talking through seven mindset te uh, tips to become a, a network marketing champion. So let's move on to the second one, Dave. Second one is about being massively on purpose. So tell us more about this. Well, if you don't have that sense of purpose, if you don't have that reason, for example, the subject of the book, Nat, she didn't make her children the excuse as to why she couldn't succeed in network marketing. She made them her reason. Again, if you look at the greats, they, they don't make excuses. They don't suffer from excuse And you've got to find your fight. You've got to find that reason why. I know you've heard that probably a million times, people, but it is true. And for me, 
people have got to choose a different story. They've got to choose a different set of beliefs. You know, just because you haven't achieved success up to now doesn't mean you're not going to succeed. Um, you've got to find, like, for example, Apple had Microsoft, Batman had the Joker, right? You've got to find your fight in the business and then start to give yourself a different story. A belief is nothing more than a thought that we think over and over again that becomes part of our structure. Okay, it's a practice thought, wanted or unwanted. Now, even me personally, Wes, before I trained network marketers, I worked in sales. And I, I worked selling health supplements, and I was the worst salesperson this company ever had. I was so bad, it was embarrassing. And I had this vision of doing what I'm doing now, speaking in front of groups. And I could have just said, you know what, I'm going to quit. But I had to dig deeper and connect with the vision and find that sense of purpose. And where most people will quit and say, well, it mustn't be meant to be, I chose to believe, okay, you know, failure is my friend. I embraced failure. This is a test from the universe to become more. If I hold on to this vision from my knowledge of studying this, then it's going to happen. And just like many people on this call, you're going to find yourself showing up to a meeting where there's no one shows up or one person shows up. When I eventually broke out into speaking and when I fired my boss and moved into this area of training network marketers exclusively, I found myself in rooms that had a capacity seating of 500 people where one or two people would show up. I found myself running one-day events where there was two or three people, but I would do it in the spirit of joy and gratitude because it was only a matter of time before I was speaking in front of a thousand people or more, which is my vision, and that's what I do now. And that's because I chose to believe that, you know what, any of these obstacles or challenges, this is the universe life testing me to see how badly I want it. And therefore, I had to dig deeper and find that fight. And as every networker on this periscope will agree, you've got to dig so much deeper because it's just so easy to quit. Hmm. It's interesting you say that, Dave, because network marketers who are building teams will understand that. Um, I was doing a team meeting last night uh, in East London I uh, went along and helped someone that I'm working closely with and mentoring, uh, Steve, who you know well, and uh, he's building a great business. But, you know, there was maybe 22 people there, but we probably expected 50. And, you know, driving back, and I would say, you know, you're gonna, we're going to have to do this a thousand more, you know, 100 more, 500 more, how many more times it is where you drive back thinking, wow, that didn't work out as I thought. There weren't as many people show up, but it wasn't about the people that weren't there. It was about the people that were there, and we had to, you know, give everything for them because to out of respect for them, we can't be angry at them for the people that didn't turn up, can we? Exactly. Exactly. Do you think that uh, that's something that people miss in terms of success? That they don't understand that they do have to drive home in tears sometimes. They do have to have that frustration. Absolutely. I mean, you know, you're going to have the peaks and valleys. Um, and I think I just mentioned it there, but just to, to go into it a little bit deeper, when I embraced the fact that failure was a gift, that it was integral to success, as so many great teachers, including yourself, Wes, will talk about, you know, it, 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 it is so true. If I, I learned that if I don't fail at something every day, then I'm not growing. And you have to reframe your definition of failure. If something like you're saying doesn't turn out as expected, you learn from it. Write it down. Something great that you got out of that experience. You know, someone may have said to you no when you're in front of them, right, talking about your opportunity, but you learn from that. And maybe you don't know who they know. Maybe they go away and then it just percolates a bit in their mind and they open up a door for you and recommend you. So... There's always something that makes it worth doing. And if you can see past the frustration, and I know it's hard, but that's the mastery to the fact that, you know, if, if you're not failing 
at every day in some capacity, then you're not growing, you're not evolving, and you're not moving forward. So again, it's a choice. I chose to view so-called failure as a gift to make me stronger and become more. Yeah, absolutely. And that's something I always say to people, that we all think that the opposite of success is failure. And that's untrue, because uh, failure is a big part of success. It's absolutely not the opposite. It's a vital part of it. So, Dave, let's look at the third, uh, the third mindset tip to becoming a network marketing champion. And we've got some lovely comments coming through from people. And sorry that we're not engaging too much uh, with them at the moment, but keep them coming and keep the love hearts coming as well. Um, Dave, the third tip, mindset tip to becoming a network marketing champion is getting focused. So tell us more about that. Well, I mean, this is the money right here. <laughs> I mean this on every level. Because in this day and age, more than ever, whereas we live in the age of massive distraction, I loved your periscope from the other night because you talked about stealing back time. And do you know that if you go to the, the, the data on this, according to the research, on average, the average person is spending 2.1 hours a day in distraction, right, where their mind is wandering, where they're surfing the net, where they're comparing themselves to others. So forget about the obvious things, like, which are so important, like they're watching the news or they're, you know, watching Netflix and that's stealing their time. But their own thoughts are stealing their time and occupying this space, that vital real estate inside of our mind. And again, the research shows once a person is distracted, it can take up to 25 minutes to refocus their minds on the work they were doing before they were interrupted. So when you raise the bar, you'll notice that all of these internal thoughts, you know, will start to come up and try to sabotage your success. So if you listening to this can develop the capacity to concentrate when the majority are distracted, then you are going to win. And it is one of my, if you like, themes, Wes, when I, as you know, at my events or any of my trainings and in the book, it's one of the things that myself and Nat worked on from the get-go, and I work on network marketing leaders from the get-go. We get seduced by all these distractions. Nowadays, it's Facebook notifications, everything. And unfortunately then, you know, there's a saying where attention goes, energy flows. People tend to focus more on what's not happening with their team, on what's not great about their business, on what's not happening with their finances. All the time, they have these unconscious expectations of failure before they go into meetings, before they get on the phone. And that's why I always say, Wes, that people need to be professional at running their minds. Just because they're listening to CDs in the car, which is fantastic, and they're going to events, which is fantastic, if you get inside their head, you know, there are 70,000 thoughts a day, according to research, that run through our mind. Now, and many of those are positive and many are negative, because if you call yourself a positive person, I can tell you there are so many thoughts running through your mind that just pop up automatically that are negative. Now, here's an interesting piece of research as well, Wes. Normally, when someone focuses on a goal, it only takes a few seconds, maybe even seven seconds, right, before a negative springs up and sabotages that. <laughs> and if you can train yourself to hold on to an outcome, a positive thought, for just 17 seconds, 17 seconds without a negative, then you're going to attract energy at that frequency. You're going to attract like-minded thoughts, circumstances. And then if you keep that going for just over a minute, then you're into what's known as the subconscious or unconscious mind. I know people know about this who are listening to this, are of positive thinking, but it's true. My experience in training that is that once we got our goals, our outcome, our vision onto the deeper part of our mind, the subconscious or unconscious mind, then it's almost like after a while, the business will take off on its own. After a while, it's like you're on autopilot. You wake up in the morning, you're not sabotaging yourself, your, your success. Your expectation is one of, of, of success. Where are my opportunities today? Where are my great leaders today? And you go into your meetings, your phone calls, um, your presentations with a different mindset, an expectation, a certainty that you're going to win. Hmm. 
great tips there and some some brilliant comments coming through from people as well about how you know and their their uh surprise at what you said there about how quickly a negative thought comes into our mind uh and that's certainly something that we need to uh to be aware of. I think just being aware of that makes a difference. Just being aware of those distractions makes a difference. In fact, people uh, put in comments saying that they've actually now deleted Facebook from their phone. You know, Dave, uh, uh, one thing, a tip that always stuck with me, before we had mobile phones, before we had texts, before we had uh, Facebook and Periscope and everything pinging away at our life all the time, all we had was a landline phone and the mailbox. That's right. And we had a choice. When the postman arrives, or didn't even arrive, he got to your door and put the letters through, we choose when to go and pick up those letters. And we choose when to open them. And sometimes we leave it a day or so. And the advice I give to people is, treat your phone, your text, your WhatsApp, your Facebook, your everything, treat that like the mail, like the old mailbox stuff. Because why do you have to say, oh, hold on a minute, everything else I'm doing in my life right now needs to go on pause because Sally has texted me about her cat or someone's uploaded a picture of their roast dinner at the Toby Carvery. You know, it's just not essential, is it? And it's important that people avoid those distractions. But that's great advice you're giving there, Dave, about being focused and not allowing those distractions in. Well, for me, it's everything. It, honestly, it's absolutely everything. Because if you can choose to block your time to make the calls without distractions, to block your time so that you're not at the whim and the mercy of every notification that comes in. I make a chuckle that on my one-day event, there's nothing worse than, you know, the needy team members sending you a text and it almost sounds like, I need you. And, you know, straight away, you're, you're off your purpose and you're into problem solving where you shouldn't even be there in the first place. And, um, you know, it's the same with social media, Wes. I feel that, you know, there, there are some people, obviously like Nat, uh, and she's wrote a book on it, of course, called Social Networking Double My Business, which is, uh, for me, that's a mindset in itself. That's a mindset in itself to be able to get out there on Facebook and to choose, for example, not to be distracted by it, not to be distracted by what other people are doing, but to literally put yourself out there, to just step out of your comfort zone. That is a mindset, and it's a confidence thing as well. And, you know, you've got to choose wisely. But you're so right. Just when you had the phone... I remember, again, and it makes us sound old, Wes, even though we're super youthful. <laughs> um, you know, just, just I, I remember just having the phone book and a phone and locking myself into the room. And all I had was that winning feeling. Initially, it wasn't even a very clear picture, I have to say, with the vision. And, you know, it's at the start of our book, a saying by Walt Disney, if you can dream it, you can achieve it. You know, he said, hey, I didn't have it clearly, super clearly initially. But it was big and it was bold, it was bright, it was out there. So it was enough initially to bring up the winning feeling. And I noticed with that winning feeling, I just close my eyes, bring that up, talk to people from that stage. And then very soon, I was creating something out of nothing. Very soon where I had no list, I had unlimited prospects to join my opportunity at the time. Mm -hmm. Well... Uh, we're uh, getting more and more positive comments about this. I'm glad you're enjoying it, ladies and gents. Uh, it will be live for 24 hours. Uh, so, um, you know, make sure you, you can go back and, and revisit it and you can share it with your team. But there's still plenty more here. It's uh, Wes Linden here live with Dave O'Connor, who today released the book, How to Create the Mindset of a Network Marketing Champion. I do, of course, say today, but by the time this goes live on YouTube in a day or two's time as well and other places, it'll have been a few days ago uh, or even months ago or years ago, uh, depending on the legs that this has. But it's great to have you join us. Thanks for doing so. Um, so, yeah, Dave, thank you for joining us as well. We're going to carry on in a moment. But let me just remind you, if you think there's value in sharing this, it's completely generic network marketing tips then you can swipe up or down, left or right, and then press the share button. You can share on Twitter, Facebook, or Periscope. Uh, and please get your team involved in this because some more great tips coming up from Dave. So Dave, moving back to you. Tip number four 
of the seven that we promised people on uh, the mindset tips to becoming a network marketing champion is about getting momentum. So talk us through that. Well, as you know, Wes, I mean, <clears throat> movement, action is going to lead to momentum. What is the difference between the Wes Lindlands of this world, the Natalie Healy's of this world, the greatest networkers in the world, the Randy Gages of this world, the Art Jelmex of this world, right? They have momentum and they are up and running. And it's the 10,000 hour rule, really. You know, practice makes permanent, really. I'm not even going to say perfect, but it develops new neural pathways. As Gladwell said in his book, it, it isn't the thing you do once you're good. It's the thing that you do you know, over and over and over and over again, right, that, that makes you good. And the latest science will say, for example, whereas I like the 21-day time frame to actually build new habits, yeah. um, some science says 66 days, some science says 30 days. For me, I've always said, well, if you can do it for 21 days, then you're going to create momentum. If you can do the inner work for 21 days, then you're going to create mindset momentum. You do the outer activities for 21 days, then you're going to create the momentum that you need in terms of your activities. I love what you said once. You say it over and over again. Is that initially even, you know, it's you don't even have to, if you're starting out or you haven't been um, in action, you've been procrastinating for a while and you've been stuck in your business. You know, it doesn't have to be this big thing where you tell everybody that you need about your opportunity. Just start to get some momentum going by developing connections, relationships, engaging with people. And then you can build on that as you go along. Mm. So I think that's huge. I think you've got to treat it almost like a game. Um, uh, you're, you're practicing your craft and ultimately you're mastering your craft every single day. Whether it's, again, getting on the phone, um, speaking. I mean, like I said earlier, I was the worst speaker you could ever imagine. I'm not just saying that now. I was tripping over my words. I mean, I was like, it was embarrassing. And, um, you know, if I can do what I'm doing now, then I, I can tell you, anyone listening to this can be as successful as you choose. And that's the thing. It comes down, <clears throat> it comes down to choice at the end of the day. In fact, Natalie Healy, who's uh, kind of the subject of the book, uh, you're talking about the work you did with Natalie over the last few years, which has helped her become the number one in the UK in her network and the number three in her network uh, worldwide. She was commenting that it took her two years of procrastinating before she really got started. So just give us a little insight into that uh, kind of relationship with Natalie, that working relationship with Natalie, where you turned her from someone that procrastinated to someone that became mega successful and took action? It, it, it's, it's fascinating. If we look at, we were laughing at this as we were going through the book, Wes, because we were looking through old emails from the end of 2008 to beginning of 2009, and uh, Nat had all these goals to increase her confidence and, you know, to pay off her mortgage and, um, there are worthy goals, of course, um, but there was so much, as she says in the book, in her way. In fact, she was in her own way, like so many people in network marketing, and we've got to get out of our own way. But what does that mean? It really means getting in there and taking charge of your thoughts so that you can start to take charge of your emotions so that you can take the actions that you know you need to be taking. And that's exactly what Nat started to do. And inevitably then, she started to get some results. But then again, the universe will test you, right? Obstacles would come her way. And then we'd have to say, okay, well, you need to do this now. And so I had to train Nat to develop her capacity to concentrate, to manage her emotions, to let go of the negatives faster, to hold on to that vision when there was no evidence like we talked about earlier. And it was just fascinating to see that once you had that vision in place, uh, initially it was a five-year vision, then it was only a matter of time before the thing took off by itself. But the great thing about network marketing, Wes, as you know, it's very rewarding from the get-go. You can make progress straight away 
towards your bigger vision. You can have those milestones along the way. And that was very important as well, was to just chunk it down, to break it down, and just to make sure that there was very definite um, milestones along the way. And of course, there was always that goal behind the goal. The money is great, but really what was Nat doing at first? She was doing it so that her kids could go to Disneyland. Mm. Mm. Uh, you know, inspiring, uh, inspiring part of the book, and it's definitely something that uh, I think people will enjoy reading. That you know how you helped Natalie develop, because what Natalie went through, what I went through, what other great leaders like you've mentioned there, Dave, you know, Art Jonat, Randy Gage, uh, Orin Woodward, Steve Critchley, all of these guys, Sarah Robbins, they all went through this as well. They all went through this. So the, the, these. Ye months and months and months and years of thinking, am I good enough? Can I really do this? You know, can, can I make it work? And that's part of managing your emotions. So that's actually the fifth of your seven mindset tips that you're sharing tonight to become a network marketing champion. So talk us through managing your emotions and, 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 and what that's all about. Well, you know, what, what happens to most people, um, Wes, is that they're at the whim and the mercy of external circumstances. You know, it's the cost of getting started in the business. That's an obstacle. It's the area that I live in. It's the, um, it's the government. It's all these excuses. It's my upline. It's my downline. It's my cross team. And people need to take responsibility but first and foremost, I find that they need to take responsibility for the thoughts that are running through their head moment to moment. Because every thought that you're thinking is either moving you another step closer towards your goals or taking you further away. And most people, it's almost like one step forward, two steps back, because they have no control over their thoughts. And once you gain control over your thoughts, then you're going to learn how to manage your emotions. Again, it is such a crucial part of success to the degree that you can reduce your recovery time from a defeat, from a setback, from a so-called failure will be the degree of your success. You know, um, again, I remember talking to um, Branson about this and Branson said, well, the, 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 the answer for him was always massive action. It was always whenever something wasn't going right or there was a really tough emotion to deal with, he'd get straight on the phone and focus it on his business. And then it was just like, it was like amnesia. He would forget about that. And then in that space, the solution to the so-called problem would appear. And that makes sense, doesn't it? The more uptight we are, the more um, the solutions elude us. But the more relaxed we are, the more creative we start to get with the business. We start to find flow with our business. And um, I, I just find that you've got to make it a habit to start to, and it, again, it's a theme of my events, whereas, as you know, can you switch from one state to another to another? Can you switch into a state of focus? Can you switch into a state of certainty, of excitement, of passion? Because you're not going to elicit that state in someone else or your team unless you bring it up on yourself first. It all starts and ends with you as the leader, leading by inspiration and by example. But it's what's going on on the inside that's really counting more than anything, because that's a reflection of what's going on on the outside. Does that make sense? Mm, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. One of the, the tips that I share with people, and I think I've said this when I've spoken at some of your events, Dave, is, is that you know we all go through these things. We all go through these frustrations. But the one thing that always stuck with me that I've always said to myself is two words over and over again. So whatever happens, doesn't matter, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. So, you know, if the company mess up an order and they send the strawberry milkshakes instead of the chocolate ones, and that's a terrible disaster, doesn't matter, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. If the company accidentally send the 100, 100 milligrams of something tube rather than 200, doesn't matter, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. If the company disconnect your customer's broadband on the wrong day, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. Anything you don't have control over, we have to learn to say, okay, of course it matters, of course I care, 
but it can't care that much that I don't carry on and pick up the phone again because if we keep stopping every time an obstacle comes up, it's just never going to work out for us. Would that be fair to say? Oh, absolutely. And, and you know, all that being in a cool state of detachment, Wes, where, you know, the, you've, got the, you've got the two Ps that work together here. You've got patience. And let's face it, we all want our success yesterday. We all want the results immediately. And we get so, like you said earlier, frustrated and impatient. But one of the laws of success is, you know, there's a law of attraction, there's a law of cause and effect. There's also the law of what's known as gender. The law of gender, uh, or, or creation, is sometimes called it as well, um, means it's patience, basically. That there's a gestation period between when you um, set an idea and focus on that and you want to see that realized as a goal. And like you said earlier, there's always that gestation period from when you actually put and attention on your business and do a certain amount of activity before it shows up later in your business. And there's no two ways about it. You have to be patient because, it, you know, if you're impatient, that's like planting the seeds and then it's like the next day you go and you dig up the seeds because you're anxious, you're worried, you're saying, well, why isn't that happening? Why am I not recruiting somebody? Why is nothing happening in my business? And you, you carry this underlying state of worry about you, then you're driving away the goals that the universe is trying to bring you away, if you like. You're driving away, you're repelling the prospects from you, the opportunities from you. And it goes hand in hand then with perseverance, Wes, that you've got to be able to dig deeper, you've got to be able to persevere. And, you know, if you demonstrate the resilience to bounce back quickly from a defeat, if you Again, have the end vision and you know you're going to have, have to overcome stuff. You could be in the midst of stuff right now. I'm sure lots of people are in the midst of stuff personally, just personal problems going on. You know, there is light at the end of the tunnel. You will emerge out of that. It is the hero's journey that the great mythologist Joseph Campbell talked about, which, by the way, was uh, how George Lucas originally came up with the story for Star Wars. Hope you've seen The Force Awakens, folks. It's amazing. Um, but those two go hand in hand together, that if you can be patient and you can persevere, then you're going to, along with the practice we talked about earlier, doing it over and over again, taking that consistent action, that bold action, that massive action at times, then you're going to be able to manage your state. You're going to be able to remain in that state of detachment mm. uh, that we're talking about. Mm. So cool looking at some of the comments as they come in, Dave. There's a, a girl called, uh, I, I think you pronounce it Chiara, uh, who, and she said that, as we say in Dublin, it'll all be grand. I haven't quite uh, done the accent right there. It'll all be grand, exactly. <laughs> oh, Natalie Healy has just shared as well. She's exclusively shared that uh, she spends her time in the car with me and she spends her nights in bed with you, Dave. Uh, I think she's talking in both cases about our audio CD. <laughs> I was getting jealous there. <laughs> Yeah, yeah um, exactly. The audio CDs, um, the blueprints um, that are, are part of my reprogramming and rewiring um, material as well. So, yeah, anything you get your hands on, basically, I recommend it, which I think we're moving into when I'm covering the, the next point anyway. But, um, yeah, she just, but that's a great thing. And I think everybody wants um, to attract people to their teams, don't they, who are coachable, right? And, there's nothing worse than people who know it all to begin with. And even to this day, Nat is earning an income that very few people on the planet will get a chance to earn. And she's still as humble as ever. She's still open to learning and to growing. She's a lifelong learner, just like you are, just like I am. And that's the great hallmark of a champion. You never know it all. And she was always willing to follow the instruction perfectly. So if I said, do this exercise, do it for 21 days, she would do it. And then if we need to do it another 21 days, she would do it. If she needed to put a new habit into her routine, then she would do that. And she was relentless about that. And I think that's what the greats do. They're able to protect their focus and they're able to protect um, their that real estate, that vital real estate inside of their minds mm. more than anything. They value that. It's so high on their values list. And that's a great way of putting it. They, they value the real estate in their mind. It's fascinating. You know, 
Um, I think it's Orin Woodward said at the Mastermind event a couple of years ago that if you bought yourself a new car, like the, your car of your dreams, uh, I'm not into cars, but a Porsche or a Maserati or a Bentley or whatever else it might be, uh, and uh, and then you just thought, well, I've, I don't know what to put in this. I'll just, I don't know, maybe I'll get some Coca-Cola and some coffee and mix it together with some sand, and I'll stick that in the car rather than petrol. You wouldn't do that. So why do you do that? Why do we do that to our heads? Why do we do that to our minds, where we put less good stuff in our minds uh, than, than, you know, we don't pay attention to that. It, it, it's strange. What, what's that about, do you think, Dave? What is that about that prevents people investing in themselves where they'll spend a load of money on a night out, they'll spend a load of money on a car, they'll spend a load of money on stupid stuff that isn't going to help them, yet they won't actually invest in themselves. What's that? I think it's lack of education. Worse, uh, and then often people know what to do. They're not doing what they know. It's a it's a self sabotage, isn't it? By the way, I just saw that Art Jonak is on the call. I just want to uh, say hi to Art. It was so awesome being at Art's mastermind recently. Uh, I just was in the audience as a participant, lifelong learner, and I learned so much um, from him. He's a great ambassador in our industry. So just a shout out to Art there. Yeah, absolutely. Or uh, Art, uh, Art has a, a Periscope uh, account at Art Jonak, but he also has one uh, for the Mastermind event at Mastermind event. That's at Mastermind event. And it's well worth uh, following that because often Art will share videos, some great videos from the past, some great interviews from the past on that. And uh, it's well worth, uh, 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 you know, being subscribed so you can tune into those. So let's move on to the next point, Dave. Number six of your seven uh, tips to become a, a network marketing champion. And that's about getting discipline. So talk to us about that. Wow. I mean, the discipline life is the, the good life, Wes. You talked about it as well on your scope there the other evening, which is so true. People... They get up in the morning and they react instead of taking ownership of their agenda. They react by watching the news, which, by the way, even chemically produces cortisol, the fear neurotransmitter, which dims down their light and blocks the performance. Why would we do that to ourselves? It goes back to the last question you asked. Why do we do these things? You know, and they're just bad habits, as you so rightly talked about, that we get stuck in. And I always say to people, look, you've got to take that first 30 minutes of your day and you've got to run your mind efficiently. You've got to install a routine that primes you intellectually, emotionally, physically, spiritually for a brilliant day ahead. You've got to develop that inner game. So I get people to visualize the way they want their day to be and to write in their journal um, again, just to remind themselves of the goals, uh, the top five to seven goals, which again I talk about in the book. I got Natalie to do from the, from the get go, where I would say to Natalie, look, there's a million goals you could go for today. Just write down five, a maximum of seven, and carry that list around with you. And everything else revolves around that mission, okay? And you've got to just go for those high leveraged activities. But if you don't, if you don't, Set yourself up for a winning day by feeding your mind with the right stuff, then you're going to lose. You're going to struggle. It'll be a self-fulfilling prophecy of doom. And you know, Wes, the, 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 it's, it's the, um, the discipline, for example, of, of taking the high leverage actions, but it's also of getting those routines into place, right? Exercise, just simple things. I mean, make sure you're exercising to get the the the, the feel good endorphins going to bring up your energy. You're doing all those things, and um, the research on gratitude is unparalleled. You know, nightly routine for me, and it's a morning routine. You want to every night start telling yourself a new story of every day before you go to sleep. It'll only take two minutes, according to the research. For 21 days or two minutes scan, right, or span of time, then if you just started to think about, pull out your journal and write down what three things happened today that were great, even if you consider it to be a very a crappy day, a negative day, then you're going to end your day on a great note. If you do this every single night, 
then you train your brain to look for what's great in your life because there's lots of blessings there as opposed to not, what's not working. And there's so much research that shows that gratitude is the antidote to stress, that one of the finest ways to amp up your mindset and to totally nail your goals is gratitude because you release dopamine. You release those feel-good chemicals. It puts you into the vibration of what's great in your life, and then you attract more of what's great. And, of course, people then want to be around you. They want to be around that energy. So I find that is absolutely huge. Mm. Again, a, a, a great tip there about uh, not watching the news. That's a, a big thing for me. And, you know, it becomes bigger every time I watch the news because I sometimes accidentally watch the news. And I don't mean accidentally as in, you know, I didn't know what I was doing, but I didn't set out to watch it. But I end up getting drawn into it. And then two minutes or five minutes or ten minutes later, you think I feel worse now. I, I feel dreadful. I feel terrible about myself. So, you know, and it's kind of poison in your brain. One of the things I always say to network marketers is if you gave up watching the news or reading the news, you'd steal back 20 to 30 minutes of your day easily. That's two and a half hours a week or more that you could put into your network marketing business. And if you did that for two or three or four or five or six or seven years, you'd then have lots of free time in the future. You'd have a passive income in the future that would allow you, if you really want to, to watch 24 hours worth of news every single day because Sky and CNN and BBC, they have it rolling 24 hours a day. So if it's that important to you, then you can watch it all the time in the future. But uh, it's just not something that serves us. The same as soap operas and stuff. Now, I'm not saying, we're not saying that you have to give up every pleasure, every pleasure, if it's a pleasure to But we're just saying, just think about what you're putting into your mind. What's going to serve your day? What's going to help you move forwards in the day? What's going to send you to sleep in a nice way? versus what's going to corrupt and pollute your mind. Is that fair to say, Dave? Honestly, that is it exactly. I mean, people uh, you know, are often surprised when it's not happening as fast as they want. They're not recruiting people. They feel stuck in their business. And I say, it's no surprise. Life is exactly fair like that. You are getting exactly out of your business what you're putting into it. You're getting exactly, in terms of your mindset, out of it, what you're putting into it. You keep putting in worry, fear, you're going to experience more of that, you're going to attract more of that. Now, again, there's a, there's a whole load of research, Ken West, that shows that serotonin is a pleasure chemical of the brain, and as soon as you start to move into gratitude, as soon as you start to clear your mind, get focused, um, start to focus outwardly. Like one of the greatest secrets I've always found is that if you're even struggling with your why, make it about other people. Make it about going beyond your own life and lifestyle. That's important. Um, but the law of reciprocity kicks in. You know, how much value can you add to people's lives today? And as soon as it focuses outward, then you'll notice that you automatically, it's inherently built into us, you automatically release that serotonin, that feel-good chemical, and you start to move into what research calls flow. You start to find your flow in the business. And again, if you're happier then you draw people to you. If people think that you're having fun and you can help them, well, it's a no-brainer. Of course, they're going to at least give your opportunity to do diligence that, um, that it deserves. Yeah. And again, lots of comments coming in. People are already, you know, many of these things, people are already on top of this. They're already teaching their children or their grandchildren about mindset or about uh, self-confidence and self-esteem and, uh, positivity and stuff like that so it's that's again one of the absolute pleasures of a network marketing business people don't see that when they join but you know the personal development you get and then you can expose your children and your grandchildren to I notice a big difference when I meet kids who have spent some time growing up with network marketers versus kids that haven't that's not being disrespectful to those that haven't it's just you see a very different type of maturity and mindset in those kids and grandkids. And I think that's an absolute privilege that we have in network marketing. So I hope you're enjoying uh, this Periscope this evening. Uh, there's lots of great comments here. This is Wes Linden joined by Dave O'Connor, uh, who has released a, a new book, How to Create the Mindset of a Network Marketing Champion. 
available from www.knowledgeisking.co.uk. That's www.knowledgeisking.co.uk. It's also available on Amazon in Kindle form as well. Uh, if you are enjoying it, please do share some love. Tap the screen, share some love hearts. Um, um, <laughs> yeah, thank you, Dave. We need the love. A minimum of a thousand hearts each from all of you. That'll uh, that'll see me catching up with Randy Gage in in no in no time whatsoever. But um, one other thing as well, if you do want to share this, please do. You can swipe up and down, left and right, and then press the share button. You can share on Facebook, Twitter, and Periscope. So moving on to number seven, Dave. Number seven of your seven mindset tips uh, to become a network marketing champion. Share with us what that is. Uh, number seven is start to program yourself. Right? This is my forte, Wes, because it's like having this extra set of gears in, inside of ourselves that we don't tap into. It's like this extra inner power that if you suddenly start to use more of your mind, <clears throat> if you suddenly start to um, take control of your focus and access the greater part of your mind, then you'll notice that the difference between the people who are really succeeding, they're running on a program. I mean, it's pretty obvious when you see people who are absolutely passionate, who are on it, they're in it to win it. When they approach people, Whereas they don't have one foot in, one foot out like a lot of people. You know, it's pretty obvious that they're fully invested and behind their opportunity. This is the best thing ever. Even if it is only a vision and the results are not there yet. And that is someone running on a program. And you start to be able to program yourself properly by shifting your focus, by replacing those negative thoughts systematically with the more positive thoughts to refuse to dwell on what's going wrong and what's not happening, as we touched on, to replace the negative self-talk, which is very important, with positive self-talk, to start to notice, like we talked about, all the great things in your life, gratitude, okay, to reflect on the successes you've achieved to date in your life. We so many successes, Wes, from our past that we've forgotten about, you know, the first time you recruited someone, or, you know, when someone showed signs of promise, and <clears throat> they may not be in the business now, but it was still a great magic moment. We need to... Um, Bring those up. And like we said earlier, make it a habit of reviewing what went great during the day. I run what's known as a superscript. Well, you want to know what a superscript is in the morning? Um, I literally, instead of what most people do, where they literally wake up and they say, oh, no, another day of struggle. My business isn't going great. I hate the idea of making calls. Again, self-fulfilling prophecy of doom. Helpful, no. Um, my attitude is No. I'm so grateful for the life I live. I'm worthy of success. It's my birthright to succeed. There's opportunity everywhere. Every challenge is there to make me stronger. All things are possible if you believe without doubt. Nothing is impossible. I'm destined for great success. Life wants me to win. I've total control of my thoughts. I am master of my emotions. Everybody is going to benefit and be touched by my magic today. And that's the way I will talk to myself. It's just something that I... A script that I will run, and I would just suggest, respectfully suggest, that you write out some things that really resonate with you folks, and, you know, stick them by your, your dresser in the morning, or on your fridge, or whatever, and immediately, you just get your mind into that frame, um, that positive frame, and you'll notice it sets you up uh, for success. You start to program yourself, and then you're able to program yourself before you go into any meeting, or get on the phone, where you switch your state very quickly. You, you, even if you had an argument with someone or something's not going great in your life, you can literally talk yourself into your greatness instead of talking yourself out of your greatness just by changing your state, just with the right self-talk, by running the right script, and that starts you reprogramming yourself for success. Again, um, something that Natalie has mastered over the years, but progressively so. It, it's progressive taking control over your self-talk which she's still doing to this day. Yeah, I mean, what, one of the basic uh, phrases that many of us have heard in network marketing is that if you think you can, and if you think you can't, you're absolutely right. And, you know, that is so true. I, I see people all the time in our business that say, well, you know what, it doesn't work in Milton Keynes, or it doesn't work in Cornwall, 
or it doesn't work in New York. And then two minutes later, you talk to someone who's tearing the thing apart in Milton Keynes or Cornwall or New York. What is that about then? Because it's not the area. What is that about that says one person with the same set of circumstances in the same area uh, is not succeeding, whereas somebody else with the same circumstances is? How, how, how do we legislate for that? Again, the research is just is very clear on this, right? One person has a different set of beliefs that is empowering them, and the other person has a, a set of beliefs that that is disempowering them. One person has the right self image where they see themselves in a certain light. They see themselves as a success. They see and feel the experience of their vision ahead of time like we talked about from the get-go and the other person is just looking around at the lack of evidence of their goals and they can't see beyond that it's almost like trying to you know there's a wall and there's a garden a beautiful garden inside the wall and people jump up and they get a glimpse of it every now and again but then they fall back down right that's the average person whereas they the master they're able to literally rise above it and then ultimately they're living um, from that garden, they're actually in there, and uh, they're thinking, feeling, and acting, and experiencing the whole thing ahead of time. That is the true mastery, Wes. That's what the super achievers—they're um, able to do. They're able to focus exclusively on their goals to the exclusion of the opposition. Whereas the average person, they focus exclusively uh, on their problems right, and what's not going right to the exclusion of what they want. So this, the, the high achievers in network marketing are not swayed by the outer opposition, as you talked about there, the area they live in, the naysayers, the challenges, the setbacks. They don't care how long it takes to realize their dream of freedom. They believe without any shadow of doubt that circumstances will sooner or later bow to their intentions. It's only a matter of time. Hmm. Good point, though. Um, Art Jonax made a really interesting point there that some people have someone that believes in them that that cares for them and that's 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 true as well i i i you know can take that for granted i grew up with loving parents i went to a, a nice school i've got a nice family got lovely friends uh, and i do realize some people come into network marketing without that good fortune without those set of circumstances where they perhaps are have had difficult family situations. They perhaps had difficult fa uh, friend, supposed friend groups. They had dysfunctional employment. Perhaps they're in a dysfunctional relationship or have been, and they don't feel there's anyone backing them. Network marketing does give people that backing. It gives them the support, but they're still on their own. They've still got to succeed. So what advice would you give to those people that are sitting there thinking, yeah, but who believes in me? Nobody believes in me. Nobody's ever believed in me. What advice can we give those people? Well, I, I think Natalie gave some great advice in the book where she said that she had to borrow my belief initially in her. If you look around, there's going to be people you admire, that you look up to, that you want to emulate. And yes, you can make it your business and, and get to know them. But even if you don't, you can... Um, it's behavioral modeling. You can literally say, wow, I really admire, I really um, look up to this person. And you can start to um, emulate those traits and model those characteristics and borrow um, their mindset, if you like, their beliefs. Um, and then ultimately then you'll notice that as your belief, and it is all about belief, Wes, it really is. I mean, to the degree you can believe without any doubt, to the degree you can literally increase your level of belief and at the same time reduce your level of doubt, um, then something extra comes from you um, that alters conversations in your favor, that causes people to, to really be drawn to you. And I think that's absolutely everything. So borrow somebody else's belief. Uh, of course, as you know, uh, as Jim Rohn used to say, um, whoever you hang around with most, it's going to rub off on them. So start to hang around with people who are doing better than you. Mm. And start, because it is going to rub off. Because we are like sponges. And you, any of us can do that. You can start to um, surround yourself with more like-minded people. I'm afraid that is key. Mm. Because ultimately, what's going to happen is you're going to make a jump forward in your business. You're going to see some success. But the old programming is going to fight back. Um, the old habits are going to rear their ugly head. 
Um, but as soon as you have people around you that you can pick up the phone to, right, and they're going to say, well, of course you can do this. This is all part of the game. You know, you're destined for greatness. You're destined to succeed. This happened to me as well, but look where I am. They're the people you need to be talking to, not the people who kind of sympathize with you and say, yeah, it's tough, life is tough. Uh, I guess we're not meant to succeed. That is absolutely huge. And uh, one of my favorite uh, phrases you've alluded to there about, you know, if you show me your friends, I'll show you your future. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> Big Al talks about, in fact, Big Al always says that, you know, if you hang around for broke people or if you hang around for dysfunctional people or if you hang around for negative people, I guarantee you, you'll be number five. And it's, it's absolutely true. And that is something we can control. I know people think they can't. They say, oh, yeah, but I'm stuck. But I'm stuck. But I'm here. But you don't know. But the word but is probably one of the biggest uh, prohibitors to success. Is that fair to say? Well, that's totally fair to say because, you know, again, going back to the focus, was. It, it, this is all backed by research, not just me saying it. The people who are succeeding have such an unwavering certainty and single-minded focus and sense of purpose. They are massively focused on purpose every day in every way, more so like that. Whereas the average person who is the butt person, they're what's known as double-minded. In other words, they'll tell themselves what they want and why they can't have it in the same sentence. They're their own worst enemy. It's like they cancel the whole thing out. And you see it over and over again. It's being one directional. That's the secret of success. As opposed to two things going on or three things going on where your goals are cancelled by the negative fears or doubts or emotions that actually come up behind that. And that's how you always know this. When you're about to hit that tipping point, Wes, it's when you think big, when you think of your vision, and it's so exciting. It propels you to go to bed in the morning. It excites all of your mind. And it'll allow you to get on the phone and do what you previously were resistant about doing. When you offer your mind those big goals, when there's no opposition to it, when your own mind starts to become your best friend and says, yes, we can do this. Yes, we're in the right place at the right time. Yes, we're destined to success. That's when you're one directional. That's when you know that you're about to hit that tipping point. Mm. And that's where the magic starts to happen. I like to call it the magic that starts to happen in your business. Yeah. And I think people who are experiencing that know why you call it magic. Uh, and it's not because it's magic. It's not because it's come by luck. It's because you've worked really hard for it. You've done everything right. You've kept doing it. You've kept doing it. And eventually it starts to happen. The, thing, the people that sit on the, on the side, they think it's a different type of magic. <laughs> they think it's well, luck. It's a combination. It's about working hard. And it is, as Will Smith, the actor, says, you've got to have um, you know, a, an incredibly strong, unapologetic work ethic, right? But you've also got to have the right mindset with that. That's why I always say that you can't have one without the other. You can't just sit there and just... You know, say I've watched The Secret 77 times, so someone's going to come knocking on my door, my next leader, and without going out and doing anything. But on the flip side, you can't just work and work and work and think negatively about what's going wrong and expect you're going to succeed. You have to have both of these things working together. The right mindset and the right action, okay? That is the combination that produces success. Again, what I find is people need when you get inside people's heads, it's pretty obvious. There's a lot of opposition in there. Um, even people who are very well learned. Uh, people who are very knowledgeable listening to this. I still know from dealing with thousands of people, you get inside their heads and there's a huge amount of self-sabotage going on. There's a huge amount of negativity going on with those 70,000 thoughts that we think during the day. It could be, listen to this carefully now, it could be 50-50 where they have 50% Positive are 50% negative. It's more likely, according to the research, to be 80% negative, 20% positive. Whereas the research shows that in order for us to succeed, there needs to be a three to one minimum balance of positive to negative thoughts. Not just one to one, three to one is what the research showed was necessary for people 
people to actually swing their mindset over where it's working for them and they're starting to become master of their mindset. Great advice. I mean, I've been in this profession now 18 years uh, in network marketing, 18 years uh, with just one company. And I have to say, you know, I've done a lot of personal development, but I've learned so much tonight in this Periscope. And uh, I really appreciate you giving up your time, uh, Dave, for that. Um, so just to remind people, uh, you know, one of the reasons Natalie's saying that I'm not that old. Natalie's right. I actually started network marketing when I was three. Uh, so I'm 21 now. And, uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> so just to remind people why we've done this Periscope uh, tonight, and this will be available for the next 24 hours on um, uh, www.periscoperewind.com. Uh, that's www.periscoperewind.com. I wrote it down, but then I realized that if I show it that way, it's the wrong way around. <laughs> So that doesn't quite work, does it? But www.periscoperewind.com. It will be live for the next 24 hours. Uh, and then we will get it available for you uh, via my blog, via Dave's blog, uh, and on YouTube. Hey, let's, hear, let's hear what people's takeaways were. So to end on that, it would be great. What did you get out of tonight's scope? What was the main points that hit home with you? Absolutely. That's a great point. So... Do tell us now, please type in what you've uh, enjoyed about this, what, what value you've taken away from, from this Periscope, and we can just share that with everyone. I always think it's a way to end any meeting, any team meeting. By the way, if you're doing home meetings in people's houses, I always do that at the end. You get 10 people to all share their best takeaway, and everyone goes away with an extra 10 tips they, they you know, kind of forgotten. So let's see what else... Uh... People have talked about internal, uh, Andrew, Andrew Stinchcombe, who I know well down in Bristol, who's uh, building a good uh, network marketing business, talked about internal distractions and recognizing them. Uh, Katie Buxton, I need to stop getting distracted. Say that again, Dave. Someone said points one to seven. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Someone saying I need to delete Facebook, take more actions and positive thinking. I need to concentrate. Discipline, 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 gratitude. Yeah, gratitude, that's a good one. Ditch Facebook, delete Facebook. There's a lot of people saying that. Uh, distractions, discipline, positivity always. Take Facebook off my phone. Switch to a state of excitement. Did you see that one, Dave? Yeah, crucial. That's a great point, Wes, because that word excitement, if you don't have that excitement, no matter what's going on with your business, genuinely switch into that because it's contagious, it's what catches people, it's what's going to catch them um, when apparently, you know, people, you're talking to people who are more successful than them or you even intimidate certain people. They'll get swept up by your excitement. Hmm. Borrow someone else's belief. That was a good point. That was a really good point. Uh, Art Jonax just put a different spin on the face says he loves Facebook, which is true, actually, because I love Facebook, too. So do you, Dave. So does Natalie. Uh, as long as it's used for the right reasons. Facebook, sitting there reading about people's... I've just, I've just defluffed my belly button, and let me show you a picture of it. Or I've just cut my toenails, or... It, that's probably not going to serve you or stuff about um, my next door neighbor's cat's really annoying and it keeps meowing or my the dog's really annoying or their children don't behave that stuff you don't need to be absorbed by that is that fair to absolutely I think Arthur's going on there we mentioned it earlier that I think Nat um, has wrote a book on it and that's why she's so successful is because she uses it properly whereas 95% of people do not use it as one wisely as say now as wisely as I've seen um, because they're too busy comparing themselves to other people who are literally saying yeah yeah I just recruited 10 people in two minutes and then they're saying oh my god what's wrong with me you know and they start to beat themselves up um, so if you use it properly and you use it wisely then of course it's one of the greatest tools for building your business naturally because hey what, what are we doing now this periscope on social media and on facebook allows us to get our message out west uh, to thousands of people that we wouldn't have been able to get out uh, our message out to otherwise mm -hmm. um what else have people said there <laughs> turn off notifications yeah 
Ignore my ignore negativity of my best friend says I think it was Jen there. I have to say if your if your uh, best friend is negative towards you about what you're doing, you might wonder whether or not they're uh, they're your best friend really. Is that unfair? Am I being harsh there, Dave? Uh, absolutely not. I think in any relationship, I and mean, the reason why you're in that relationship, hopefully, even whether it's a, a, you know your other half as well as your best friends, is that. Um, they're supporting you, that they have your highest uh, good right in mind, and they respect your choices. So those conversations have to be had, don't they? I mean, um, I, I think Randy Gates says that very well, where he says, well, you know, don't let people disrespect you. I love what he says about that, and I think you've got to be vigilant about that. Um, the, the, the people I see who are doing the best are ruthless about what thoughts uh, they allow into their mind and who they're spending time with. And they'll very much reduce the amount of time they're spending with negative friends, or if necessary, they will um, stop that association altogether. Mm -hmm. Uh, Because your life is too precious and too short to actually allow people to um, dampen down your your dreams Mm -hmm. and stop you from being all you can be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Of course, there are always circumstances. Sometimes people think they're protecting you. Sometimes they think they're helping you. Sometimes they think they're giving you a, 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 some critical thinking to make you look the other side of, of, of your excitement, perhaps. Um, so there's not a one-size-fits-all answer to this, but as long as we're conscious of uh, what we're putting into our brain, both from the social media, the media, the people around us at work, the people around us in our life, um cool well listen there's some great stuff here there's some great 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 stuff here uh all your comments thank you so much for sharing all of those uh dave just in closing thank you so much for joining us uh just a reminder again dave's book was out today but if you are not watching this today then it was out yesterday or the day before uh well it's always going to be today when you're watching it i suppose isn't it uh how to uh, create the mindset of a network marketing champion where dave talks with natalie healy who he'd worked with for or has still works with as a, a kind of mindset coach for the last seven years uh and there's a, some great uh, tips on how he helped shape her and push her forwards to become the number one uh, distributor in her network in the uk and the number three distributor in her network Uh, in the world. Natalie was due to be a speaker at the Mastermind event. Uh, Unfortunately, illness prevented that, but we're hoping to hear her over in Orlando uh, later this year. God, because it's 2016 now, isn't it? Uh, In November this year. Dave, any closing thoughts? Any closing thoughts to to send people to, uh, you know, to bed with? Man, it's all there for taking, guys. You know, again, the research shows at the end of people's lives, and I'm sure you've heard different versions of this, 80% of people said it didn't happen. They got sidetracked, it didn't happen. You know, stuff happens in all our lives, they didn't know how to recover, whether it was a divorce or an illness, or, you know, they didn't know how to get back up. And you, you've got an opportunity in whatever company you're with now to really go for it. You know, I always... I'm alarmed, Wes, when I hear of this person jumping ship to this company, this person jumping ship to this company, thinking that's going to do it. But they bring the same mindset with them. And it's just, it's a fact that you've got an opportunity and you've got to go for it now. And, you know, let that not be you who's there at the end of your life saying it didn't happen. You've got to make every single day count. Make every single day better than yesterday. Everything has always got to get better. That's my mantra. Each, each month has got to be better than the previous one. Each day has got to be better than the previous one. And, you know, the average person, they live out their lives in a state of complacency. So get in the game. Get in it to win it. Get behind your company and develop that inner game so that you can master the outer game as well. Right? And, and, and take it seriously. Put mindset higher on your values. Just become a professional at running your mind. Because most people um, are pretty amateurish when it comes to running their mind efficiently. Mm. Um, so, you know, it's all there. And thank you for being here. It shows your commitment by how long you've stayed on this call, the amount of people have been in, on this call, 
Um, you want it so badly. It's there for the taking. Uh, you've just got to restructure your mind um, to work for you just a little bit more. That's all. Join us, uh, periscoperewind.com. This will be live for the next 24 hours. Make sure you share it with your team, or you can share it now by swiping up or down, left or right, and then pressing the share button. If, if this is the first time you followed uh, one of my periscopes, uh, and you're not following me right now, but you've ended up here because someone shared it, then that little uh, icon there, where it's a little, I don't know if it's a man or a woman, or, or not too sure, uh, uh, if you press that button there, you can then uh, uh, just click the follow button. And it'd be great if you follow in the future, uh, and there'll be some great scopes for you uh, on a near daily basis. And I'm pleased to say that Natalie Healy will be joining me uh, later this week, or, at the, or just after the weekend. We've just got to fix a date. Uh, and uh, Natalie Healy will be here uh, live on a periscope, giving the the students side of it all. Dave's been the teacher, Dave's been the mentor for Natalie. And then we're gonna have Natalie on as the student uh, and how she used Dave's tips and really turned her mindset around to make sure that she built a network marketing business that could support her and her children and give them a lifestyle that they wouldn't have got anywhere else. So thank you so much all for joining us. Thanks for your interaction. There's been some great comments. There's been lots of love hearts. And there's been some incredible tips. And uh, say goodbye. goodbye. Bye, everyone. Thank you best for hosting this. Thank you, my friend. And thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Can't wait to connect with you and hear about all your great results moving forward into 2016. Together, let's make it the best ever. Great stuff. Dave, thanks for joining us. For joining us. I'll be on Periscope uh, again pretty certainly tomorrow. Uh, and uh, keep your eyes on social media and you'll find out when I'll have Natalie live. It will be in the next few days. We'll look forward to seeing you then. Have a great evening, great afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Uh, get that mindset right and make 2016 your year. I'll see you all later. Bye-bye.